All right, so what you're looking at is my modification of my air compressor to help reduce the amount of water that goes into the tank and therefore into the lines. So the reason I wanted to do this upgrade is I brought home a sandblaster. I was very excited to use it. I brought it home. I got the media set up and the airline set up to run it. And after about five minutes, it gets clogged up. The media does not come through the nozzle like you would want it to. So if you buy a sandblaster or something that requires a large volume of air, you will quickly realize that the more air you compress, the more water you're going to have to deal with in your lines. So this is a 60 gallon, I think it's a 5 horsepower, I don't know, I'll put the specs on here in a minute. So for things like airing your tires, air tools, certain air tools that you use a little bit of, you don't really run into this problem as much. You can put a drain on the bottom, you let it run once or twice, fill up, drain the bottom, and I'll show you that in a minute. And for those cases, water is a nuisance, but not a problem. So the original setup had this pipe that went directly out of the head into the tank. So all of this, all of that, all of this replaced this and so the purpose of this is to take the hot air hot compressed air from the compressor head run it through something that cools off the air to separate the water from the air through this filter here before it goes into the tank so there's lots of other good videos that kind of get into this, but I wanted to share the fittings that I used to hopefully save you time. The first mistake that I made was I bought half inch interior diameter pipe, and that was the wrong size. So this pipe is actually half inch OD or outside diameter pipe. So I think it's maybe, I think it's three eighths interior half inch outside diameter. So again, the first mistake that I made was trying to get a larger pipe than what came with the system. Getting it from these threads to the pipe and all these adapters and so on is just, it's mind numbing. I learned more than I ever want to about national pipe thread, uh, different types of fitting, compression fittings, flare fittings, things like that than I ever wanted to, but I was able to get it done. So I took back the original soft copper coil and purchased this, which is half inch outside diameter soft copper coil pipe. So this adapter was what came with the unit. And basically this has a little compression fitting that slides into the inside of that. And a nut compresses this and holds it into the system. Everything here is exactly the same as everything that came originally on the unit. So what I did is, here is... That's the Home Depot. That's the Home Depot part number there. And this is the little sleeve that looks like that, a compression fitting. Well, first off, I did have some leaking. I put this all together just with a Teflon tape. I learned a little bit more about you know stopping leaks on YouTube. So I did do the Teflon, the white Teflon tape, as well as some uh, thread sealant, which is shown here. So I got all this done with one 10 foot box of copper coil. And I did, I did make a few mistakes on some of the bending and cutting, but what I did is I measured from here, straight over to here, then over, over, up, boom, just general eyeball, and then I added maybe another six or eight inches just to make sure, which ended up being plenty. The next problem that, that I had is you need to find a way to bend the copper tubing. There's many different ways. I'll show you the tool that I used, which was fantastic. It's very smooth bends. Uh, the problem is it was like 40 something dollars on Amazon. So it's pretty straightforward. You can see there's a couple simple bends here here, a 90 degree bend here, and then a 180 to go in here, okay? So what I tried to do is do the more complex bends first. And so I started with the 180 here first, 
and then went and I wanted to go all the way to where it's in line with the compressor head. Once I did that, then obviously you can see the piping would be up here. So I bent it down and of course into that. So this one wasn't too hard. It just takes a little bit of thinking. So this is a Dural eBay special oil cooler, universal oil cooler for a car that I'm using for this. Now these fittings are Dash 8AN fittings and I really didn't think that through or try to look at the size. I just saw, hey, this is an oil cooler and it's gonna work. So I think the interior, the inside diameter may be a little bit smaller than this, but I ordered it and I did not uh, want to return it. So one of the things that I would recommend is try to find, and I'm assuming that there are larger diameter, larger inside diameter oil coolers, uh, but just something to, con to consider, because this may be choking down the filling of the compressor. It doesn't seem to be, um, but uh, just something to pay attention to when you're doing yours. So I don't know his channel, but I'll put it up here, but I learned from his channel to use a flare fitting here that will basically fit the AN fitting there. And he also used JIC fittings, which I was able to get from McMaster Car. They weren't in inexpensive, but they weren't too bad, all things considered. So here is a flare fitting. So I flared this tube and used a JIC fitting, and I'll put the size that I used here. So that takes care of getting it into the oil cooler. So I had to buy three tools for this. I had to buy the tool to bend the soft copper pipe. I had to buy the flaring tool and then the copper tubing cutter, which you may already have. Now you'll notice that this cooler has a fan. I originally thought I wanted a fan. Then I watched some of the other videos where they did not have a fan. They were getting good performance. And then I was questioning, do I want to go through the pain of hooking up the fan? And after running this a little bit, I still think that where we live, which is high temperature, high humidity, that this is going to be absolute necessity. I haven't run it a lot, but it still gets very, very hot exiting this, hot to the touch. So what I'm going to do is we'll run it. I'm going to run it for about 10 minutes. A, we'll see how much water gets in my little temporary trap there. Um, but anyways, I'll show you without the fan running. This will be kind of video one, and then I'll do a difference with the fan running later. So getting down to the bottom of the oil cooler, same fitting, same flare. Uh, you know, 45 degree-ish flare is what I did. And J JIC fitting, it's got a little brass sleeve in there um, that holds everything together on that fitting. These next two bins were probably my hardest bins. We use this shed for other tools and storage and stuff like that, so I didn't really want too much stuff away from uh, sticking out of the compressor. So I wanted a tight 180 in. Um, you, you are limited. You do have to come out so far. I could have done maybe a 90 fitting here, which might have been recommended. Um, but I did a 180. When you have a bender, you want to use a bender. So I did a 180 here, went down, and then, you know, 90, 90 almost, and then 90 into this fitting here. So this is basically a, a half inch to, I think, half inch fitting here. Same thing here. Did a little reducer here to accept the compression fitting here. And then as you can see, just the way this worked out, I, I was down to my last section of pipe, so I didn't make a couple mistakes here, but I just lived with them. So I, I went straight over. You can see it's a little bit wavy here. Straight over and then up and then straight into the tank. And this is basically the same style fitting, half inch compression as you see there. Same as that. So I was able to reuse that nut down there. It's now, for the filter, this is going to be a little bit of an experiment depending on the temperatures that I get. So this filter is recommended for 160 degree Fahrenheit and below. I think if I run this a lot when it's hot in the summer, I'm going to get hotter than that to the filter. I try to reach out to Milton several times, twice through their website. I uh, Instagram, I've called them, left two messages. Fantastic products from my experience, however, very hard to get a hold of. So this filter basically will filter the water out and whenever the, compre whenever the pressure stops, it will drain it out the bottom there. 
So typically, this is the type of filter that you would have at each air station and overnight when your compressor is shut off and the, and the PSI drops down to 5 PSI, this will squirt all the water out. So this is used in a little bit different capacity than perhaps it was meant to be used. Um, so again, I, I try to contact Milton a couple different times just to find out for this type system, what do they recommend? Have not heard back from them yet. So we're gonna run with this. Um, what I may do is eventually replace this one with a different one and then move this one back into the shop where I had it before. Okay, so what I wanna do today is run this. I'm gonna fill it up once, get it full, and let's see how much water we get out of it. So you can see right now we're dry, no water. I will eventually put something here that's a little bit nicer looking than that, but for now, it's just a magnet up against the tank holding this cup in. So it's 77 degrees and 49% humidity, which is pretty low humidity for us, but let's run it, let's see what we get, let's see what we pull out of it. And uh, what I'm gonna do is fill it up. You can see how this works. We'll see how much water comes out. Then I'm gonna basically run it for 10 minutes and then let's see how much water comes out. All right, so here we go. So not much, but that little amount, just one cycle goes into your tank every time. All right, so let's run her for 10 minutes and then we'll see what we get out of this. By the way, I did empty this and this is hot to the touch. This as well. So let's run her for 10 minutes and see what happens. Not sure why, but zero water came out of that. All right, take some temps. It's the head, 245. I don't think it's working good there. Top of it, 295. About 150. Ooh, 185. Body of the air filter, 172. I don't think it's reading right on the copper. This is 100. But there's like no water in it. I don't know if it's evaporating in there. I'm not sure why. It's not what I was expecting. So I did drain this just prior to starting it. So let's see what actually went into the tank. Still quite a bit. All right, when this cools down a little bit, I'm gonna manually drain it. So you can see for me, the temperatures are still way, way too high. I don't know why there's not water coming out of that, but it's way, way too high. So I definitely want to move on to the next step, hook up the fan. So that'll be in a follow-up video to see how the temperatures change. Uh, but this is still way hot to the touch. I mean, it's cooling it off, that's for sure. It's not dumping 300 degree air and water directly into the tank. It's maybe cutting the temps in half, it looks like. But again, I did not get the water out of there that I was expecting. I don't know why. 